Hi, hello, in today's video we're going to show you how to make a special building using geometry nodes and I'm going to show it in not so very good detail because I was really, well the recording session was really bad in this one but basically I'm going to show you how to create this procedural building using geometry nodes and you can control that uh, the multiple values of this building using the geometry node modifier which is going to be very very useful so without further ado I'm going to show you the two main nodes which is one that controls all four walls and another one that controls the roof and ground floor so let's get started so I'm not going to waste time modeling stuff I'm just going to append that from my previous plan file uh, however, keep in mind if you're trying to make this and you're following along, make sure that the size of your objects, the one that we're going to use as walls or ceilings, are similar on both sides, on all the sides. So mine is 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5, um, which is, it just makes it easier to use the drum two notes later on because we already have the standard number for each uh, shape we're going to use. So, geometry nodes. First thing I'm going to do is to add in a grid. Now if you're wondering a grid, um, basically it has all of these connections and settings that you can change, the size of the x and y value. Also you can add in vertices, um, which is very useful. That is the useful part. Now, to control of this, we are going to use a cell math node so take a math node set the cell a cell if i'm uh, guessing this correctly is the size of a single square in a grid so this is going to control the size for the x and y value also the vertex amount on the x and y since we have that to give us a little bit more control we're going to use an add math node so that we can add in our own separate values and control it a bit better so here's the setup and with that then we have control over the grid hooray okay so now we have the information for our walls as you can see here but right now we only have one wall and to do that uh, we need to split it into four separate informations to make four walls. Now the easiest way I found is to use a transform node and stick two of those on the uh, output here. So we're going to use one to move the wall and then we're going to split the information and use another transform node to do the exact same thing just opposite. And we're just going to duplicate everything, move it down and flip it 90 degrees. Pretty easy. Now the complicated part comes when we need to use a bunch of math nodes uh, in order to control the distancing of the these two pairs of walls because the currently they don't communicate if you change the value on one uh, node group it doesn't change the relative value in the other node group so to do that we're going to use a bit more math. The easiest way to do it is to use a divide node because we're trying to get the center part of the two walls. Remember, any type of number divided by two will get the center part and that will be our anchor for both walls. Uh, next up, we're going to use a multiply add and two more add modifiers, uh, add, add math nodes so that we can control the translation information or the location of our walls. Now, currently the uh, information on the X, Y, and Z, or Z if you're American, um, is locked because if you click and drag it into the uh, this map node, if you click it and drag it into the X, Y, and Z section there, you'll find that the information will get discarded. So to change that, we're going to find a combined x y and z Ugh. and we're going to connect that math node to one of the translation uh, information here x y or z well x and y because we are trying to change the uh, uh, current location 
not the height. So, after you've done that, you just need to do the same thing, just on the other uh, grid pair. And that takes a bit of work because at this point it all depends on everything you set up earlier on. So, it takes a bit of work and trying to find the right settings. But the math nodes all work together properly. You just need to find the right settings and locations. So you just tweak the numbers a bit, change the rotation of the walls, and sooner or later you'll find the correct answer. Okay, so once you find the correct answers, the correct numbers, make sure that you move them into this specific shape because I find that this is the easiest way to make the grid uh, or grids work properly together. And now we can scatter our building parts. So I'm going to drag my wall part here, or as I labeled it, floors, and I'm going to drag it into a geometry. And I'm going to drag it into our geometry nodes here and it will automatically turn into a node. We're going to use another node and that is a point on instance, in, not, an instance on points node uh, so that we can scatter the material object that we have here evenly across our grid. So after you did that, it might take a little bit more tweaking on our side on your side uh, to make the walls perfectly line up but afterwards you should have a wall that works together if you change the x and y value of um of the cell math nodes if you change those values the wall should work uh together corresponding with the well with the numbers that you uh punched in so this is pretty much done all that we need to do now is the roof and ground floor which again it's fairly simple so all we have to do now is to duplicate all of this that we used for the uh, sides here we're going to duplicate this and rearrange some of the nodes uh, mainly these front nodes that we have here we're going to uh, add in a few more cell nodes and we're going to connect them directly to one uh, of the math add nodes so it's parallel instead of being vertical like the ones that we made for the uh, walls. Um, basically enough we're going to use that and we're going to, to flip the input value um, of our x and y to make it work on a flat plane instead of a vertical plane. Um, what else? Oh yeah, and the math nodes, we're going to use the same math nodes as before, but this time we're going to change a few of the numbers so that it's connected directly to the topmost line of our wall grid. Uh, basically just this. As the roof is done, we're going to use the exact same node group and we're just going to drag it down using a transform node and make sure that it sticks to the ground floor. And that's pretty much our building. Pretty easy. Um, if you're wondering how I scattered all of the extra objects, it's that's pretty simple as well. Uh, and you know what, I think I'm just going to show a montage of me scattering the objects and showing the nodes afterwards because this is very simple and basic. Anyways, yeah, I guess that's the video. Uh, if you enjoyed this type of content, please leave a like, share with your friends and comment down below what I, I do next. And please subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. I'll see you next year. Let's have some fun.
There's weird creaking sounds in my room. Oh well, see you soon. <laughs> Okay, so at a moment here. So I noticed I forgot a few things and I probably should say them. So, the notes that we made are made to calculate the location of the walls and where to scatter objects. So basically when you want to scatter the objects, like the air conditioners and the stuff that is going on the roof, it's better to take uh, some parts of the nodes um, and connect those as separate node groups. Uh, so you can basically move them accordingly. Now, if they don't look like they should be, um, you could just use a Nether Transform node and move them along the axis that they should be on. Now, if that still doesn't work, as you can see here with the air conditioners, uh, the easiest way that I've found was to just select the object, move it into edit mode, and just move it. Uh, along the uh, X or Y axes or all of the axes and just to make sure that they can uh, well you can actually see them on the outside parts of the uh, of the building because the other two nodes they're scattering the objects based on where the origin is located so if you move the origin you basically move well you can basically move the objects anyways that's finally finally the end of the video hopefully you enjoyed it uh, it's the end of the year. Hopefully it's the end of the year. Hopefully this video isn't late. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll see you soon. Thank you.